Todd Mayfield. Now, when you were growing up, I guess you spent a lot of time with your dad and uh, being with him as they practiced and, and, and played games. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was real fortunate to do a lot of things with my dad. Uh, we traveled. I traveled with the football team on Friday nights. I traveled with the track team all over the state. Uh, my father also was an official, so I got to travel with Bobby Hart and uh, Mr. Metz back there. So besides, uh, well, there's a lot of stories I learned as a youngster. Um, <laughs> my first department chairman teaching was uh, Art Leary, and uh, I went with him a couple times on road, they call them road trips. Um, and I realized what a road trip was very early. Um, but I, I was very fortunate to have a lot of, a lot of the legends in town. Uh, when I was young, I got to grow up and, and observe and watch, and uh, it, it, was, it meant a lot to me. Uh, you have 173 wins, third, third most, I guess, in uh, the Tucson area? Um, well, I, that's what I read in the paper. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a long year. It's a lot of years for 173 wins, but I'll tell you, it's, uh, they were all, they're all special, and, and uh, to be at Tucson High with the legends there, to go to Palo Verde, has been a lot of great athletes at Palo Verde. Um, football program, the kids there, it was uh, the first year we were 9-1 and one and it just seemed to roll and, and uh, it was, uh, you know, kids are the same everywhere. It's sometimes the leagues and the opponents you play are a little different. I found that out too a little bit. John Riesco, right? For uh, Arnold Chapo Riesco, his father. Your dad was uh, was one of the best catchers come out of Tucson High School. He played, I guess, there in 1937, 1940. Uh, that is correct. He was born and raised in Tucson, and so was I and my family. And uh, all I hear are stories about it, of course. I mean, that was a long time ago. He'd be 87 today, and so it means a lot for the Human County Sports Hall of Fame to induct someone who maybe four people in this room might know who he is. One of them is Buddy Granger. He's not here today, who he grew up with, but it, it means a lot to us. A very good catcher. He goes into the war. He, he won't, he, he joined, I guess, was he the Well, he didn't join back then. They, 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 they drafted him. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, he, uh, he graduated at mid-year and signed uh, to play with the university for a year and played for Pop McHale. He played one year and uh, was uh, rounded up by the scouts to play professional baseball. Uh, Pop McHale was like a father to him, and he signed his first professional baseball contract in Pop McHale's living room. He went on to play, and about a year later, the war got him, and he went away into the South Pacific and fought Guadalcanal for uh, three years and came back in 1945 when the war ended. And uh, then from there on, went on to play 10 years of professional managing and playing uh, minor league uh, baseball. Okay, next up, Joe Robinson. I know Joe and I have, uh, we've, we've uh, touched paths here the, because he has been a referee. Well, you started uh, officiating in 1954, right, in North Carolina. That is correct. It wasn't something that was planned either. <laughs> I'd been going to the ballpark with the gentleman that was an umpire, and his partner didn't show up, and he said, little guy, let's go. And I worked that ball game, and I did not have a good day. <laughs> and when that ball game was over, I said, this is the end of that. Three months later, I started working again, and I'm still trying to officiate sports. <laughs> I say that <clears throat> because there's some guys in here <clears throat> today that don't think I've ever worked a decent ball game. <laughs> Todd Mayfield talked about how many wins he had. <laughs> well, my record is like this, folks. Zero wins, 5,312 losses, <laughs> and one tie. I came to this city on the ninth day of June, 1963. I was in the Air Force. I told my wife, the first chance we get to leave, we out of here. It was hot. I volunteered to go to Vietnam. I went to Vietnam 13 times TDY and seven times to Thailand. We are still here. I needed a job because during that time, I was making less than $125 a month being in the Air Force. So I went to the Parks and Recreation Department, told them I was an umpire. They took me to the ballpark that night over on Main. I worked one ball game, and Ernie Batiste said, follow me. He took me to Santa Rita Park, <clears throat> and that's where I met Johnny Gleason. 
first ball game I worked down there, Johnny Gleason was the catcher. Great guy. And uh, I'm sure that if I hadn't done a good job, I wouldn't be standing here today. If I can work the ball game and they don't know who I was, I've done a great job. And I teach people now, look, they're not coming in to see you, and they can play ball without you, and you need to work hard to keep the players in the ball game. Next up is Warren Rustin. Is Warren a uh, high school Whittier? Uh, of course, a big time basketball player, nine varsity letters. What other sports did you play back there? Baseball, cross country, track. All right. So, Warren, you come to the University of Arizona, Bruce Larson recruits you over. Uh, any other schools you were thinking about going to? Uh, all of the Pac-8 schools at that time, there were about uh, 75 schools that recruited me when I was out of high school. I had to play basketball in Southern California, but decided I wanted playing time, and so I came to the University of Arizona, Bruce Larson's first year, and the first team in the Western Athletic Conference. Three-time uh, all-WAC guard, uh, set a lot of records. You're the team captain for three years. Uh, a lot of records that uh, you know are still up there for the UA. I was very fortunate. Played with great guys, had a great career, a lot of fun, and. Uh, sports for me is uh, is a uh, process of learning and then applying what we learn from sports to other parts of life. And so I've been very fortunate to have a good athletic career and uh, it served as a good foundation for other things I want to do. In fact, you and I had a common experience when Pat was playing for the Big Red Machine in 1975 and I was working for the President of the United States in the White House. We decided to go to opening day uh, out at your stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you being a U of A guy, I was looking for you. They said you were sleeping in the clubhouse at the time, so I <laughs> didn't understand that. Um, but the president and I uh, ended up there, and uh, we were there for a specific reason, because Hank Aaron at the time uh, was about to tie Babe Ruth's home run record. And he did in the first inning mm -hmm. on a fastball over the left center field fence. He hit a 714th home run against the Cincinnati Reds. I'm honored and I'm flattered and I'm humbled to be up here because my career started back uh, with Friday Night Football at, K at KLB in Albuquerque. And my then news director, a gentleman by the name of Gordon Sanders, brought me in. I was fresh out of Loyola Marymount University, he had a horrible free agent shot with the California Angels. And Gordon handed me a camera and a microphone, and he said, kid, you know how to use this, right? And I grabbed the microphone, and then I said, yeah, um, I know how to use this. Hello? Hello? And I looked at Gordon and I said, Jesus, Gordon, it's for you. And that's how it all began. And I'm honored to be here again tonight. I, I am. I'm absolutely humbled. Uh, I was here for two very memorable moments in Tucson and Arizona sports history. And that was the 1997 National Championship of the Wildcats. Uh, they brought it home for the first time, the only time. And then in 2001, I had uh, the great fortune of being on the on the back end of the dugout uh, the night that the Arizona Diamondbacks won the World Series against the New York Yankees. And those two, those two circumstances really stand out. Got it? Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations. Jim, I need a win now. Empty chair. <laughs> Well, we agree with you, Jim, but go ahead and have a seat. Thank you, Dave Baldwin. Oh, I know.